We conducted the study because we saw the results of the FREEDOM trial, which showed the benefit of revascularization with bypass surgery in diabetic patients. And there are significant limitations in a randomized clinical trial, may, namely being the restricted nature of it. So we wanted to see if the results of the FREEDOM trial were also going to be effectiveness of the FREEDOM trial in a broad real-world population. So this was a, a real-world population. We included all diabetics with multivessel disease who are having revascularization. And our population was slightly different to the freedom population because we had about, about two-thirds of the patients had recent ACS and were stabilized. Whereas in the freedom population, only about one-third of the patients were stabilized ACS patients. So this was an all-comers, but we did try to restrict it to patients who would not have entered the freedom trial, such as those who are having concurrent valve surgery or those who had unfavorable anatomy or for other reasons wouldn't be a suitable bypass candidate for some reason. The primary findings were that uh, we were able to show the effectiveness of the FREEDOM trial, but probably the more provocative finding was that our findings, which was unique in a population that was enriched with acute or stabilized ACS patients. So if we look at the NCDR action registry, about 30 to 40 percent of patients get percutaneous intervention and about slightly smaller number get bypass surgery as the revascularization strategy. And there's a substantial other number of patients who are managed medically. But what we showed was that even in patients who have a recent ACS, the benefit of bypass surgery in this cohort analysis was present. And I think this begs the question that in patients who have a recent ACS, where the tradition is to go to the cardiac catheterization laboratory and percutaneous coronary intervention is carried out, maybe we need to stand back and say, well, rather than getting a quick early fix, we need to think about what's going to be beneficial for this patient over the long term, given that they have a chronic condition or two chronic conditions, diabetes and atherosclerosis. We have a hypothesis on, uh, for that. The benefit in the ACS patients was a surprise to us, but I think uh, this may have reflected the patient population. But I think all ACS patients also go from being a acute ACS patient to a stable CAD patient. So I think there's an interface between these two periods. So I think we saw earlier on the ACS patients who have a lot of events, but by virtue of these patients being managed with their risk factors, actually become a stable patient by 12 months. But it's hard to know where that exact cut point occurs, whether it's at 30 days or six months. But I think most people will believe that once you add an ACS, after about six months, you become a stabilized CAD patient. I think that explains the difference in the interaction being not there in the acute ACS patients at 12 months. We need to define what the optimal strategy for a diabetic patient with multivessel disease following an ACS. I think for, for a long time the standard has been if percutaneous intervention can be performed then this is the preferred strategy. But I think we need to step back and say what is the long-term strategy for this patient rather than looking at the short-term strategy for these patients.